work on Thursday and went Christmas shopping Friday, went Christmas shopping Saturday, cleaned the house Saturday, cleaned the yard Saturday, I've got to do it again today, so I'm really excited. Um, but I'm excited to be here. Hey, I love Christmas. If you don't know me, my name is Frank, um, and it's exciting. It's an honour to, uh, to be able to share with you. Is this two Christmases in a row? It, yeah. Is it? Two in a row? It is. Thank you. That, that means I either need practice or I did a good job last, last week. Ah, um, last year. All right, I've got a game for you because I've I, I got a game. Now, you can win a cherry rock. Did you know, fun fact, cherry rock is the most made chocolate out of Cadbury? There you go. You've learned something already. Welcome. Welcome to church. So, there's going to be some letters on the board, on the screen, and it's going to make up um, basically a word. And if you get the word, you're not allowed to call it out. Even if you know it, you're sitting there and you're being lazy. First one down to tell me what the word is gets the cherry rock. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Game. Make sense? Yeah. You, so you guys could win a cherry rock. You could be winning. All right, you ready? Yeah. Nothing happened. Are you got to turn it off? <laughs> oh, hang on. I've got to turn it off. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the one? All right, I'm prepared. Here we go. There you go. You got to come down and tell me. It is Jingle Bells, but wait, in order to get the chocolate, you got to sing Jingle Bells to everyone. <laughs> I'm only joking. Well, okay, that's good. Really quick. How do you do it that quick? Just let's see It works. <laughs> 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 um, all right. We usually have a Christmas tradition, but I want to kind of keep it going. I, want, I need all the kids to come down. So if you're young, you know, grade six or down, whatever, come on down. Be brave. I'm here. It's all good. Thank you. What's up? Gil, you get to be in, I'm not, I'm not going to say boring church, but you get to be in big boy church now. Welcome down. You can make some noise from this now, future. These guys are cool. Great job out there today, Florence and Lily. So I'm going to throw every single parent under the bus right now. Um, usually, on a Christmas day, they come up and usually they're holding something that they got. And they share something they got. And it's really cool. But today, you guys have to share something you're hoping to get. Stuck <laughs> <laughs> in parents. Shops are open till 6 pm. Um, so just remember, keep, maybe keep it under 100. I don't know. Like, you know, your parents want to go out. So I think of that thought what you want, what you want for Christmas, and you can share it. Are you ready, Angel? No. No, are you ready? You're ready. Okay, we're going this way. Okay, thank you. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. Good, good. When you get that, I can confirm I am a weapon at that game and I'll be more than happy to play you. I can, my son can confirm. I'm good, aren't I, Sam? I bet you Yeah, he's better than me. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Threw me out of the bus. Okay, Lily, what are you hoping to get for Christmas? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Easy, please. Easy, please. Florence Joy, what are you hoping to get for Christmas? Under $2, darling? Two hundred. I'm joking. What are you hoping to get for Christmas, boy? Oh. <laughs> Easily please, chocolate lollies, no worries. Samo, what are you hoping to get, mate? A life comes to buy our sugar. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, Henry? Hang on. What are you hoping to get, mate? Um, Crazy Crest Mandalorian Lego set. Oh! oh. Now, I could be wrong, but that sounds like it's very complex and hard. Is that right, Henry? <laughs> I think it's very good. It'll be hard for me, I reckon. Alright, you go over there. Annie, what are you hoping to get? Squish Mouse. What's Squish Mouse? Oh, it's like, it's like a, a bunny. Soft ball, yeah. Like. So I took so Florence and I went on a date yesterday. We went into um, Plato's near Mill Machines and, and the teddies are like 50 bucks. It's like, I just want that little tiny teddy. I'm like, if you got those, no chance. Uh, anyway, that'd be very good, Annie. Hopefully you get that. Lucky, what are you hoping to get for Christmas, mate? I'm real fan tea. Your front teeth. Three front teeth. You've got to eat Christmas dinner tomorrow, mate. Otherwise, it's just putting in an ice cream. Hello, young sir. How are you? What have you got here? You've got cars already. Have you already opened a present? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you hoping to get? Is it Hot Wheel related? Yeah. yeah. That is awesome. I love Hot Wheels. So, what's this car here? White, orange, and it's super fast, is it? Here we go. What's it say, Ben? I need my glasses. I'm just too black. It's too, yeah, it's too. And this is my Becca. Is that Becca? Yeah. That's my Becca. Right, that red is car. red car, right. Red car. <laughs> what is it, Ben? It's called the track tune. The track, the track? Track tune. Alright, the track tune. There you go, make some noise for the track tune. There you go, dude. <laughs> and then, what are you hoping to get for Christmas? I have no 
idea. What are you hiding? What are you warning? What's the prize? You don't know? Okay, alright. <laughs> Easy please, mum and dad. Card, doesn't matter. Angel, what are you hoping? Nail polish. Nail polish. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Florence, if whenever Florence gets nail polish, she, I have to book in to the hairdresser. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you call it? That's it. Frankie, right. what do yeah. you want for Christmas? What do I want for Christmas? Ah, it's a good question. I bought myself a snorkel set. Curious? <laughs> you can do that when you're a little older. You can buy yourself some. I had to try them on, though, You had to make sure the right size. Now, I love presents. And when I was your age, I was the fastest at unwrapping presents in all of Tasmania. No one was faster than me. So what I've done, I've got a little game. We've got you guys a box of tissues each. And what happens when we say so, it's a little game. Go for a minute. You have to empty the box of tissues as fast as you can, but only pulling one at a time. Does that make sense? Yeah? Because it's a little bit like you can show it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, you got one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm worried. What? I had nine. I can't count. I've got nine. Okay, that's fine. I need two to be in two. Pascal. Pa Sam and Lockie, you want to be in two? That sounds really good. Okay. Huey, let's go down over there. Millie, over here. Florence, stand there. Sam and Lockie, find the spot. Here you go, Huey. Huey. Right, Henry. Here you go, Addy. Can you go, big man? That's good. I'm going to help you, okay? We'll work together. Okay. Okay, so when I say go, do you guys know what you're doing? Yeah. Okay, so what we can do, we can prepare ourselves. You can take off the top. You can pull out one like this. And then, then all you got to do is just this. Okay, you guys ready? Okay. Five second countdown, you reckon? Yep. Okay, yep. You guys got it? Okay, you guys can do that. Okay, when you're ready. Five, Five four, four, three, two, two one, go! Go, yes! 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 Come on! Get go! Get go! go. go. We are moving fast over here. Watch the tissue. Let's keep going. Fast, fast, fast. Eddie's killing Oh my god, it's really good in that way. Fast the saddle lock. You know what the result is. Nail. Go, Eddie. Eddie. You guys are. to look around who's standing up and in five seconds you're all going to point at one person who's standing up. Only the people standing up can play. Okay, so everyone has to point at someone standing up. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Kathy, I'm just saying Corey. Kathy and Corey, you've got to come down. I'm seeing a lot of things that you do. Make some, you guys win, you guys win, you gotta come down. Sorry. Oh no! Hey kids, see me after I've got a chocolate for you. I forgot. Alright. Kathy and Corey are totally not prepared for this and I love it. Okay, you guys have a game. Your game is we're gonna see who's the fastest and best rapper rapper right here. Okay? You gotta wrap up an each carton. 
All right, all right. You've got you've got scissors, sticky tape, you got and you got a cherry ripe on the line. Corey, how are you feeling, mate? I don't like cherry ripe. You got the cherry ripe. Wait, episode one. Okay. <laughs> how many presents have you wrapped this evening? Uh, one. How many have you wrapped this evening? Ten. 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 Who's, who's gone over ten? Hands up. Who's gone over twenty? Oh, what the, a couple up there. Nice. Okay. Okay. Five second countdown. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! It's a race, by the way, guys. It's based on skill and execution. Interesting techniques here. We're going the rapid pace first. We're going the sticky pace. Oh, Corey. If I had money, I'd know who I'd be money for. The money is... Push it, push it, push it, drag it up, push it through. Hard it open the foot, that's it. It works, it works. As long as it looks good, it doesn't matter what happens between them. It will it'll be good if it looks good. Yeah. Kathy's on to it. Oh, she's back to the lead. Corey, you're in trouble, mate. Just to let you know, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, she's already got the city tape in. She's where you're at. Preparation, my friend. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a good man's wrapping. Sorry, well. a lot of work to do. <laughs> and when you miss, you drop that. Oh, you, you got a chance. 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 Can you guys um, give me a favour? Can you move that table to the side for me, please? Thank you very much. Kids, see me after because I've got chocolates. I have leftovers, so if you want chocolate, dude, don't sleep on the tissues. That would be bad. Hey. And semi funny, but we'll go with that. Um, all right. That's the game start. It's not like end of sermon. Like that's just some fun. All right. I've got a confession to make to you all today. Um, here that um. <clears throat> It's not good. You might look at me differently from this point onwards. I love receiving presents more than giving them. I love it. I want to get presents. I don't. I like to give, but I love it. Is there anyone else in the room bold enough to be with me on that? Oh my goodness! Thank you. Just the kids. Thanks, Russell. Okay. One adult and me and the kids. I got work to do, Jesus. Okay. Um, I might get saved by the end of today. I just I love giving presents. Don't get me wrong. But I really love opening presents. And when I was thinking about what to do today for Christmas, I just love presents so much. I was like, I've got to talk about presents in some way, shape or form. So here I am talking about presents. When I was younger, I gave my mum a list, a scale of 1 to 10. 1 meaning I want that the most, 10 meaning I want it the least, but I still want it. It had places of where to get to it, the right colour and everything. Are there any list present writers out there today? Yeah? I still do it now, I just send my wife a message instead. Or the link, yeah? Does anyone do that? Send the link, yeah? You might just go by yourself, but... Yeah. Who... Who does... Yeah, dude. Who does Secret Santa out here? We do Secret Santa to try and save money, but it's just costing more money, because I've got three Secret Santas oh. on the go. What's the point in that? Like, it's crazy. And the price has gone up because of inflation. Like, what, you can't get much for 30 bucks anymore, right? So bumping them up. So, um, it's crazy. But... Jesus is born. Stick with Christmas, Frank. Christmas and presents and Jesus. Okay. And I was thinking of what what gifts did Jesus give? The birth of Jesus is why we celebrate Christmas. And it got me thinking, what are the gifts that Jesus gives us? Now, Jesus gives the world. He gives you and I many, many gifts. Life-changing gifts. Gifts that could go, you know, we could be here all day to listen and talk about them all. But today, we're just going to talk about, unpack six of them that Jesus being born, offered us. Alright? So you with me? Yeah. Good. First one is love, I think. Pretty important gift that Jesus gave. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19 says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow deep down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. You may experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Find it really interesting how it says, 
You may experience love of Christ, though it is too great to understand. Yeah. But it's going to sustain you. It's going to be enough. Now, um, if you don't know, I've been working in and out of the youth group here for a while and um, working with young people, and I'm a teacher, so I work with young people all the time. I've got a heart and passion for them. But um, things arise, behaviour arises, kids do stuff, say stuff, and, and it can be really challenging to deal with, but it's a really great opportunity to be there, love them and help them and guide them. But on reflection on where these behaviours come from and why these young adults are doing these things, I think it stems from a lack of love. I think it stems from a, a root cause where their identity, they're not sure that they don't know the love of God. They don't know that this love is unconditional. This love, you don't, there's not a prerequisite of things you, you, you need to do. It's not something that, it's a, it's a gift that's given, but it's not something that you need to do to get or to give back to receive. It's, um, it is free there for everyone. The love that Jesus lived and the price he paid on the cross is a present for every single person. And, um, and I think it's, it's an amazing gift, and we need to know that um, deep down. I think that is one of the greatest gifts that Jesus gives being born is his love. So, that being said, second gift is peace. So John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. I don't know what translation I got this from. Dad was reading my notes. He's like, Dad, unto you got a spelling mistake. And I'm like, oh. It was a mad rush, shopping, cleaning the house, writing a sermon. Yeah, we're here. Um, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither your heart be afraid. The Bible talks a lot about anxiety and, and, and peace and, and the, the, the counter of them. And I think that's because Jesus knew that today we would be in a world where we live in crazy anxiety and stress, but we need the peace of Jesus that he, that he offers. The world we live is the opposite of peace. It is go, 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 non-stop work. You get home, you cook, you clean, you put the kids to bed and then you've got something else on. And you actually can't keep up with it. You're burning the candle at both ends. And it's a crazy place. But it is possible through Jesus to have his peace. To be doing life with his peace. And knowing that doesn't matter what we're facing, doesn't matter the circumstance we're in, doesn't matter how stressed we may be, right here, right now, God loves us and nothing can change that. We can find peace in that. Here's another one that is counter, contrary to how we may feel at times, and it can be really hard to, to receive, I guess, because it's just so unusual. But um, I have to put it in there, because to me it's a really important gift that Jesus' birth and what he brings to us, we, we, we need. And it is joy. John 15, verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Prior to this in John 15, Jesus is talking about the vine. And if we're connected to him, we're going to get these things. But if you're not, you're going to find things really challenging and tough. And if you're struggling to find joy right now, let me just encourage you just to lean in on God. Just to whether that means, you know, touch pace, take some time out to sit in his presence, worship a song, read your Bible, whatever those tangible things can be for you, just to really have that connection with him so we can experience his joy. Because like peace... The world we live in is contrary to that. It's just full on of busyness and things to do and standards to meet, KPIs to hit. And it can be really tough to do that. And we can easily feel like we're not doing a good job, we're not valuable, we're not worthy or whatever position we're in. But God's, what God thinks of us is far greater and different than that. And um, we can find joy and happiness in that. And to me, something that gets me through with the joy, is knowing that God has everything covered. He has plans for me, and those plans are for good. And I trust God, and I trust Him in that, so I'm going to find joy in that as well. Where would we be without the gift of forgiveness? <clears throat> in 1 John 1.9, 1, and this again is something pretty hard for us to conceptualise and understand. Um, 1 John 1.9 1, says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus' birth and life was amazing, but it led to a point where he was crucified and um, he laid down his life for you and me. He paid the price 
for each and every single one of us. But I think we live in a society where people struggle to conceptualise, I'm a sinner, I'm a bad person, there's nothing, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sin again. If I ask God for forgiveness, I'm just going to do it again and again and again. But we don't actually fully understand that the gift of forgiveness from Jesus we actually are meant to use that and open that multiple times throughout our day, week, and life. It's not just a one-off hit, oh, forgive me, and then you stuff up again, oh, I'm such a bad person. Hey, to tell you the truth, you and me, everyone here, we're all sinners, and we all need Jesus, and we all need the gift of forgiveness. And he didn't lay his down, he didn't lay his life down for no reason at all, it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose that we can be whole and forgiven in Him. And I'm going, to, I'm going to go deeper on that in a moment because I think there's a greater gift than forgiveness. Um, next gift is hope. And this is a really, really, really important gift that Jesus offers us. Jesus offers us hope. 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Circumstances in our life can get pretty dark, dim, bleak. Um, they can suck, if I can say that. You know, you go home, you're like, that was a day I want to forget. Um, or something happens, you might bump into another person's car and you have no money or insurance. I don't know what's going on, but they're real life things. But um, regardless of the current circumstance you're in, we have a God of hope. We have a God of hope. One of those songs was, it doesn't matter how much darkness is there, that God's, God is bigger, He is greater. There's no amount of darkness in the world that can take away the plans He has for you. And um, for me personally, I've had to rely on this gift a lot this year of hope. God, what are you doing? Um, had some challenges and things going on. But I fully got to experience that, that God's hope has got me through it. It's been a fuel to get me through the ups, the downs, the curves, and the bumps. Um, and I really encourage us to be utilising and using this gift um, of hope. doesn't matter what's in front of us. It doesn't matter how big it is. We have hope. We have hope in God. And... The last one, and it goes, it ties on to forgiveness, but it, I think in one sense they're both separate and they're both extremely important. But it's, um, it is salvation. The birth of Jesus ultimately offered you and I salvation. John 3, 16 to 17 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Yep. It was a full-on rescue mission. It was your marvel with all that sort of stuff tied into one. God sent his most prized possession. I would very much so struggle to send my son to do anything like that, to die for you and me so that we could be one with God, so that we could be in heaven. Yep. He died for our sins, our wrongdoings, and he took the penalty. He paid the debt. We owe God something because we stuff up and we sin. Jesus came and paid that price. He paid that debt. And he didn't pay that debt and said, you guys owe me. He paid that debt freely. And there's power in that. And because of that, we can have hope again and joy that there is a life after this place here. That we can be with one, with God in our, earth, in our heavenly home um, with him. And I think that's pretty cool. So, the band can come back. It's not like, yeah, but whatever. If you guys want to come back and stand in the snow and we'll sing a song later, go for it. God, we're nearly wrapping up. But looking at these gifts on the thing, love, peace, joy, forgiveness, hope and salvation. I wonder which one you need to unwrap in the season you're going through. And there's many others out there. Many others out there. I wonder what one. And it might be two. It might be three. It might be four. I think the greatest present is his presence. Because it's only through his presence, being connected to the vine, where we truly get to get an overflow, overfill our cup of these things on the screen. Saturday I went shopping. 
and this one bloke came in to a pet shop. We're in the pet shop. We're going to, we're going to go and retrieve a puppy. We're buying her a bowl. And this one bloke came in. And we're near the counter. He's like, um, I'm looking for a wine bag, a Christmas wine bag. He was very specific. You know those bags you put wine bottles in? And he wanted a Christmas one. And I'm thinking, mate, you're in the wrong place, buddy. You can't, you're going to go to Woolworths, Coles or a bottle shop for that. You're not going to find that in a pet shop. He was very specific. He wanted a wine bag. That was Christmassy. And he came into a pet shop. And I think sometimes in life, we can look for these gifts on the screen. We can look to feel love. We can look for peace. We can look for joy. Look for forgiveness and hope and salvation mm. in other areas. Yeah. Yeah. But these things mm. are given through Jesus Christ. Through his birth, through his life, through his actions, and dying on the cross for us. And we can be blinded at times. Whatever it is, the barrier that stops us coming to him, whether it be guilt, shame, um, selfishness, um, pride, laziness. But at the end of the day, it's only in the shop of Jesus Christ where we can receive these things. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And when he physically left us, he left us the Holy Spirit. And he's alive today. He's working today. When we don't see it, when we don't feel it, Jesus left us with that. He gave it. He made sure that whatever we're going to face in the future, what we're facing right now, whether that be in your personal life or in the globe, the Holy Spirit can provide. The Holy Spirit can lead away. But we've got to walk into his shop yeah. and do it. My prayer for each and every single one of us today is that whatever gift that you need right now, and I'm not talking snorkel sets, I'm not talking golf clubs or lollies or chocolates, kids, whatever the gift you need today that we can receive. And sometimes they're big presents and they do take a while to unwrap. But it's important to start. And unlike Christmas and unlike birthdays, we get to receive these gifts every single day day, every moment. And the worldly things, man, it's hard for me personally to find God's peace in certain parts of my day when I'm rocking and I'm running around. But it's there to be open. It's there to be open. We don't have to wait to receive them. He just freely gives them to us. The gifts of Jesus do not expire like food. The gifts of Jesus don't break and fade like 100% of items you're getting this year. The gifts of Jesus don't run out. They're not hard to source. There's more than enough to go around. And thankfully, we don't have to drive far to get them. That was a joke. You guys. Oh, was it too serious? It's a joke. The gifts, of Jesus, Christmas Eve. the gifts of Jesus don't become redundant because the newer model comes out. We all get sucked into that one, don't we? It might be phones, it might be golf clubs for me, I don't know whether cars for some people, shoes. But the gift of Jesus doesn't come redundant because the newer model comes out. And most importantly, the gift that Jesus offers us are for the taking, and they are all we need to navigate this life. So as I love gifts, and I love presents, and I love receiving, I'm going to open and receive these gifts over this holiday break and season, knowing that Jesus is the reason that we're here today. Jesus is the reason that we can be whole and one with God. Jesus is the reason that my hope and my future is secure. Jesus is the reason. It doesn't matter how bad life is going. That we can find a hope in Him knowing that He can turn things around. He's the God of transformation. That He loves you so, so much. It's a very cliche sermon. I'm going to finish off with another cliche point. That if Jesus, if you were the only person on this world... Jesus would still be sent here by God to die for you. You personally. The relationship with Jesus is personal. It's not generalised, it's personal. And if you haven't experienced that, I really encourage you to. 
Just like you go and meet someone on the street, you might start with hi. Start with hi to God. Start with hi to Jesus. And see where that takes you. Because he cares about you so much. And we get a chance right now to sing some carols, to rejoice, to be glad. We wish you a Merry Christmas.